Okay, this morning I want us to look at the story of Gideon. And you can find his story in Judges chapter 6. And I just want to encourage you to go home today and read through it and we might, Lord willing, begin to look at it in a bit more detail in the coming weeks. But at the start of Gideon's story, we find this young man has got very low expectations and he sees himself as nothing. He felt he was good for nothing. He thought that nothing good could ever happen to him. And he's fearful. We find him hiding away from the enemy who is seeking to destroy his people. And we look at his life and we see that he has no hope that the future will be any different. He's got no dream that life could get any better for him. We see that his family were the weakest in his tribe and he was the least in his family. But then one day we get to Judges 6 verse 12, something amazing happens to him and he has an encounter with the angel of the Lord and this angel begins to speak to him about who he really was and what he would go on to do. And this encounter that he had seemed to to change his life in an amazing way. When we look at his story, we see that that there were many reasons and excuses why Gideon wasn't up to the job that God had for him to do. But when God looked at Gideon, he wasn't looking at the things that he lacked. And he didn't look at him for the things that he couldn't do. Because when God looked at him, he saw something that nobody else could see, not even Gideon. He saw potential. On his own, Gideon might not have been anyone special. But his life, with God with him, he would learn that all things would become possible. On his own, we could say he was weak. But with God and how God saw him, he was a mighty warrior. That word means he was a strong man. He was a brave man. He was a mighty man, a man of valor, a man of power. Gideon couldn't see this, but this is what God saw when he looked at Gideon. So Gideon has this encounter and he he is shown his real identity. He's told, you're not useless, you're mighty. And Gideon starts to see this and believe this truth about himself. And then at the end of this encounter, he's told to go in the strength that he has to save Israel out of the hand of Midian. These were the enemy at the time. And God told him, I'm sending you. You know, just in this brief encounter, he was given an identity and he was given a purpose. You know, I want to remind us today that it's easy sometimes to look down on ourselves and think that we will never accomplish anything. But I want to remind us today as God's people that we're not nobodies, but we are mighty in him. I want to remind us that our lives aren't meaningless. We've been born for a life of purpose. And I believe we've been born in this day for such a time as this. Gideon was told that God is with you. And today I believe he would say the same to us, that God is with each one of us. I don't know if it's a British thing, but we're great at making excuses. It's so easy for us to find reasons why we can't do the things that God asks of us. But I believe today that we are to step out in faith 
and go in the strength that we have, to go in the strength that God has imparted into us. We've been called for a life of purpose. Now, many of you all know that I love walking in the mountains in Wales. And one thing that I normally do before I go, it's one of my favourite things to do, I look at the Mountain Rescue website. I just want to see where all the people have got into trouble. And it goes into detail on where people were, what happened, what they were doing wrong. But as you read through this long list, I bet they've had an easy time of it these last few months. But when you go through this long list of, of all the people that have got into trouble, it's happened for many because they were trying to take a shortcut. And they ended up taking a path that took them off the right path. They got off the right path only to find out that the new shortcut they were on was leading them into a dangerous position. And, you know, sometimes these people, it was so dangerous where they ended up, they couldn't go forward and they couldn't go back. Many people end up in positions where they're stuck holding on for dear life, desperate for help, desperate for someone to come and lead them to safety. As believers today, we've been called for a life of purpose. And one of these purpose is to go out and release God's kingdom wherever we go. And I believe we're sometimes to go out like mountain rescue teams to go out to seek and to save those who are lost to go out and release people from the traps and the schemes of the enemy we're to go out and to impart life into dead and dying situations and we're to go in the strength that God imparts to us we're to go in the strength that we have Something happened to Gideon when he started to see and believe how God saw him. Something happened when he started to see and understand that God was with him. We could say he came to faith and he became a different person. And he started to act like that mighty warrior that God saw him as. And then his life took on this purpose. And this brings us to Judges 6, verse 33. It says, All the Midianites and the Amalekites, the people of the east, these were the, the enemies of God's people. It says, They gathered together and they crossed over and they encamped in the valley of Jezreel. When you look at that word Jezreel, it means the place where God sows. I want to see today that we have an enemy who likes to attack the places where God sows. He likes to attempt to take these places over and occupy the places that God has given his people. You know, if you remember the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam and Eve authority. But the enemy came in to deceive them and steal away from them what was rightfully theirs. You know, where God is looking for good fruit to grow in our lives, we have an enemy who loves to come and deceive us and he, because he wants to leave us dead, lifeless and fruitless. He wants to come and steal what God has given us, and he wants to steal what is rightfully ours. The Bible says he comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. He wants, what it means is he wants to leave our lives completely desolate. And this is why Jesus came. Jesus came to give us life. So in this story, we see that the enemy of God's people, he comes to the place where God sows, this place, Jezreel. But in verse 34, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And then it says, He blew the trumpet. 
and the, the Abazarites gathered behind him. And then he sends out messengers throughout of all of Manasseh, and also they also gathered behind him. He sent messengers out to Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, and they came out to meet him. Gideon has this life-changing encounter with God. God pours his spirit into him. Then he starts to put into practice the word of God. God had given his people instructions of things they were supposed to do if they ever found themselves in certain situations. In the book of Numbers, we find God gives his people instructions on how to live. And in Numbers 10, we find that trumpets were used to assemble people together. And they were used for calling them and directing them and, and, and telling them where to move and when to move. And then we get to Numbers 10, verse 9. We get these instructions. It says, when you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you will sound an alarm with trumpets and you will be remembered before the Lord your God and you will be saved from your enemies. And this is what Gideon does. He takes God's word. He takes what God had told him to do and his people what to do. And he blew the trumpets to bring people together to fight. And he blew the trumpet because he wanted God to fulfill his promise, to remember them and to fight for them. Today, we've been separated for many months. We've been isolated in so many ways. But I believe it's time that God is bringing us together. And it's time to come back to God's original way of doing life. You know, sometimes when we're isolated, like Gideon was, hidden away, it's easy to, to lose track of who we are and what we're called to do. And sometimes it's easy for us to get off the right path that God has for us. And if that's us today, I want to encourage us to let's turn back and get back on the right track. The Apostle Paul says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And if we've been walking down the wrong path of life, let's just turn around, let's repent, let's come back to do life God's way. You know, in this time and in this period we've been in, it might have be that we've been leaving God out of our decision making. I believe it's time to come back and put him first in our lives. It's time for us to again build our lives around God's word and start to do what he says. You know, when Gideon blew the trumpet that day, he was being obedient to do what God had said to do in his word. And I believe that's what God wants for us today. He's calling us back to a life of obedience and action. He wants us to know his word, to hear it. And by faith, he wants us to move into doing the things that he tells us to do. I believe as we start to stand on God's word and we start to do what he asks of us, we will see great victory like Gideon did. You know, Gideon, he started off hiding. Today, let's not hide anymore. Let's put away all our excuses of why not. Let's stop blaming our past. Let's put fear to one side. But let's come together and let's begin to fight back. Gideon was told, God is with you. In the end, he knew it. He felt it. He believed it. And best of all, he, he acted like God was with him. You know, sometimes in our heads we know God's with us, but with our actions, 
they're far from believing what we know. Like with Gideon, I believe God wants us to see today who we are. He wants us to know it. He wants us to live it. And when we give our lives to him and put our lives in his hands, the Bible says that we become new creations. The old has gone. And when his spirit comes upon us, we become men and women of strength and power. And we're enabled to do great things. Gideon has this encounter. It caused him to, to change the way he saw himself. He got right with God. And he aligned himself with what God wanted to do with his people. What was important to God became important to him. And everything began to change for him. He went from being the lowest of the low. He went from a zero to being a hero. And it happened through obedience. He went away from hiding to become a leader and being an example to an army. With God's help, he drew people to him and he raised up fighting men. And they defeated the enemy. They defeated the enemy's plans for those people. And I believe what God did for him and those people back then, he can do for us today. Amen. We're just going to pray, and then the band are going to play one more song. But Lord, today we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for dying for us. We thank you for saving us. We thank you, Lord, for filling us with your spirit. We thank you, Lord, that with you we are mighty. We're not nobodies. But we thank you, Lord, that with your strength there is nothing that is impossible. And so, Lord, today, as we leave this place today, Lord, I pray, Lord, that, that the identity of who we are in you will be strong in our heads and in our hearts. And we will walk around with that knowledge that we belong to you. We are your children and we're in your army. I pray, Lord, you'll open our minds and our hearts to your word. I pray, Lord, that it will jump off the page when we read it, that it will be burning in our hearts when we hear it, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will be people who become obedient to do all that you've told us to do. Thank you, Lord, that you're bringing us together. We thank you for what you're doing today. Thank you, Lord. Amen.